What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy, the chef. The chef is in the house. We are getting ready for game day. We are about an hour and 10 minutes away from kickoff. We have the big sub, which is going to be a roast, be, I'm sorry, a French dip. We're going to call it the Texas dip. Does that sound good? Yeah. The Texas dip, because we're putting mushrooms on that sucker. We're putting jalapenos. We're going to caramelize that stuff. We're going to take that rare roast beef. We're going to put it in that au jus, melt that Swiss cheese and that pepper jack cheese on that bad boy with that horseradish sauce. And then you got a bowl with that au jus to dip it in. Oh, my God. That's some good eating, guys. This is some good eating. So we're going to have that. We got our playoff chili that's right here. And I'm going to tell you, this is multi-meat. We got... We got two kinds of southern sausage in there, okay? We got hot and mild. We got uh, chuck roast up in there, man. We, we got ground beef. We got bacon. Yeah. And, and look, my man said it was, but the chef said. Yeah, it was good. It was definitely good. Says definitely good. And so we're going we're gonna to have cheese to go with that. You know, lots of cheese because it, we're, we're eating Packers. Actually, that didn't sound good. Pause. <laughs> but we got cheese and hot sauce and sour cream, so we're going to do a chili bowl. Yeah, we're going to have that. Now, for me, there's a couple of things that I want to say. I want to say here, um, as far as the season goes. There are things that I have begged for and wished that the Cowboys would do for years. And to my chagrin, they hadn't done them. DMV once said, when you control the middle of the field, you control the field. And I believe it. I, I agree with them. And that's where we forever were ignoring safeties and interior defensive linemen. Now, to my surprise, they drafted Mozzie Smith. Mozzie Smith hasn't had that much of a chance to play because Hankins has played so well. That is the best one technique guy we've had since probably Jay Ratcliffe. And to me, that is the key guy. They don't get a whole lot of love. They don't get a lot of publicity. But without that guy, you suck. You, I'm, I'm telling you, suck. And you've got to have those guys. That's the first thing. The second thing that I've wanted is for Jerry Jones to stop being an asshole and realize he didn't build this shit alone and give credit where credit was due for Jimmy Johnson. For me, I'm a guy, I know I've got a voodoo doll, which is hard to believe that I'm superstitious, but I honestly believe in karma, and I believe you reap what you sow, and I believe that the football gods frowned on Jerry Jones for all those years because of what he did to Jimmy Johnson. And to me, it was always the worst kinds of losses, the ones that just agonized, that you are literally made to be a laughing stock. When you think about Tony Romo, who had held snaps for the kicker, you know, tons of times. To fumble one, a perfect snap, it didn't make any sense. When you think about Des Bryant being wide open on fourth and one with the catch no catch, that one hurt so bad because you were right there. Now, granted, had he caught it, you know, there was time for Aaron Rodgers to go ahead and go down and kill us. But then to turn around... And again, face the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers and have a rookie quarterback throw for 304 yards, three TDs, your rookie running back to rush for 125 yards and go toe for toe with Aaron Rodgers. And somehow Aaron Rodgers makes a play that beats you down the stretch after you take the lead. Agonizing. Seeing the Rams have Jared Goff on fourth down run for eight yards and get the first down that we couldn't stop him. Or to think about Dak Prescott running and being short of the first down, knowing that Randy Gregory, the drive before there, ended up tackling an offensive lineman. Tackling an offensive lineman and, of course, getting a 15-yard penalty that gave them a first down that gave them more time to run off the clock, in which case Dak Prescott had to run. Or having Zeke Elliott's last play as a Dallas Cowboy in a muddle huddle, a play that is so bad. The last time I saw a muddle huddle 
was when I was in high school and we were playing Washington and Lee High School, which is no longer Washington and Lee. We beat them 74-15. They played the muddle huddle the whole game and got their lunch handed to them. To see Zeke Elliott playing center, all of these things have in common agonizing bad taste in your mouth that should have been a signal to Jerry Jones. That Jerry, until you do right by me, every playoff game that you have is going to fail. Now, I believe, I believe that the curse, I believe there was a curse. I believe the football gods up there, that Tom Landry up there said, yeah, Jerry did me wrong too, Jimmy. He did me wrong too. That those Cowboys greats all looked down at that big hole inside of the stadium, looking down at one Jerry Jones with a smug look in the palace in Dallas and said, you ain't getting the big one until you fix your shit. And now we fix that shit. And I believe Stuart Morrison, Stuart's mom called me last night and she said, Stuart loved the Cowboys so much and his dream was to see them win the Super Bowl again. She said, I hope it's this year for him. She said, I miss him so much. And that touched me. And the final piece to this, you guys would see Rashid, you know, where he would annoy you, where he'd tell you how much the Cowboys suck. But I got the opportunity from April until his passing to really get to know Rashid and Rashid on a different level. And I'll say a root for us too if we go to Super Bowl. And, and, and that was the thing that always stuck with me. He said, if the Cowboys go to the Super Bowl, I'll root for them. And the last game that he watched here, I don't know if Rashid knew that his time was coming to an end or not. Rashid was not, I mean, it was the Giants Cowboys. He wore a Dallas Cowboys blanket. <laughs> But is that hot, or is it you laughing? I'm just laughing because the blanket, because he hated us. He hated Cowboys, but he had that Dallas Cowboy blanket on. And I believe that those three things will be the things that propel us to that Super Bowl. You can call me crazy. You guys normally do anyway. But I truly believe in karma. And I believe in that life afterwards. And I know right now, Stuart and Rashid are looking down. And they're ready to watch this game. Whew. I'll see you guys.